Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the most holy body and blood of Christ, or Corpus Christi, as it's called in the Latin. As we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist on this day where we remember the institution of the Eucharist, let's call to mind our sins and ask God for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of good will. We We praise you. you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the the Holy One, One. you You alone are the Lord, you You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. And he rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it upon the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the name of the Lord. The The cup cup of salvation salvation I will raise, I will will call call on the name of the Lord. Lord. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the name of the Lord. The cup cup of salvation salvation I will raise, I will call call on the name of the Lord. Lord. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. 
you have loosened my bonds. The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not taking the blood of goats and calves, but his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred, which redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread which came down from heaven, says the Lord. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to Jesus, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the householder, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city, and found it as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And as they were eating, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a chalice, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine, if you would, going back in a time machine to the Last Supper. I suspect it may surprise us particularly if we form our image of it from our celebrations of the Eucharist. Who would be there? Jesus and the Twelve, certainly. But perhaps there are other disciples, like Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the other women who accompanied them. This is, after all, a Passover meal, a family occasion, in a culture that defined family very broadly. Perhaps Nicodemus dropped in too, sneaking in unobserved, 
Who knows? We can only speculate. And the meal itself, probably not ornate vestments, chalices and patterns, bells and spells and lots of lace, but ordinary clothes of first century Palestine, plates and cups, bread unleavened, and your basic table wine, perhaps very basic table wine. As you observe the scene, we know so well from Scripture, imagine that you can read the minds of those at table as Jesus takes, blesses, breaks, and gives. As Dom Gregory Dix put it so succinctly in his classic book, The Shape of the Liturgy. These words and actions we all know so well. But what do they think? Mary, what's my boy up to? Peter, body, blood. Not sure what he's going on about, but I'll go along with it. He's the boss after all. Judas Iscariot, you pious fraud. I'm so glad I made that deal earlier today. Thomas, perhaps echoing generations of theologians, Catholic, Protestant, and Orthodox yet to come. Now, in what way are we to understand this? Real presence, merely symbolic, transubstantiation, consubstantiation, or transsignification? Oof. Many of us, I suspect, may echo Thomas in our pondering what we actually see at the Last Supper. Yet this great mystery is at the heart of today's feast. Indeed, the great medieval theologian Thomas Aquinas placed the Eucharist at the pinnacle of all sacraments. All lead to it, all proceed from it. Now, if some of you are feeling a bit uneasy in the light of our second reading, join the club. A certain reading of Hebrews may suggest an end to all sacrifices, and indeed of the priesthood. Certainly, as it may be understood from the point of view of a cultic leader who offers repeated sacrifices to placate a deity. But let's not jump to such conclusions too quickly. True, the age of repeated sacrifices is over. Whether we see this in terms developed by the literary theorist René Girard, that Christ's own sacrifice of himself, foreshadowed in the Last Supper, makes any further sacrifice redundant, or in terms like God's grace is enough, it matters little. We cannot and do not repeat Christ's sacrifice even as Christ is present to us each Sunday under the species of bread and wine. But in our celebration of the Eucharist, we remember, we concelebrate, in the fullest sense of the word, celebrate with, in the Lord's Last Supper. In word and ritual, we are ourselves part of Christ's assembly. We echo, remember, his words and actions, joining with him and all who have gone before us, from those whom he chose as his disciples through all of Christian history until the end of time itself. And in receiving the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist, we have transformed into what we have received. We literally become what we eat. Christ is the high priest, and we have the privilege of sharing in his priesthood. All of us through the priesthood we received in baptism, some of us through priesthood received at ordination. When we preach, we try to echo his words that we receive through Scripture, mediating them to our world and to communities today. In our prophetic ministries, the promotion of social and political justice, work with the sick, with those marginalized in society, activism on behalf of the environment, all of them driven by the vision of prophets like Isaiah, Amos, Jeremiah, modern prophets like Romero, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Martin Luther King, all of them ultimately driven by our faith in the risen one, the Lord of history and cosmic Christ. We remember and mediate Christ. Our preaching, our actions, our lives, all of who we are is a sharing in the ministry of Christ by becoming what we have received, or in other terms, the church. Does this make you uneasy? As it makes me uneasy. The good news is that Christ chooses people who are not perfect to be his ministers. Just look at who he chose. 
Peter, who denied him three times, Thomas, who doubted his resurrection, and the rest of the twelve who literally got out of Dodge fast when the, Jesus was arrested. Put bluntly, we are in excellent company. Our task as Christians is permanent conversion, to become more like Christ, striving to do better. We're all redeemed sinners. In one of our general congregations, we Jesuits replied to the question, what is it to be a Jesuit today with? It is to know we are sinners, yet loved by God. Our sins remind us of how far we still have to go as disciples, and perhaps show us a little more mercy to those we serve, as Pope Francis tends to remind us all. May the Eucharist, which we celebrate today, remind us of how far we all need to go in becoming Christ's body in its fullness. May we also rejoice in the fact that, what's and all, we are already part of that body. May we truly be what we eat. Let us then together profess the faith we share by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As part of this body of Christ, as part of the Eucharist that we both receive and are to become to others, we bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions on this day. We pray that we, as Christ's body in the present world, may strive to grow in ever greater holiness, that we may truly be what we eat. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray that the theologians and church leaders may work unceasingly to build up common ground between our divided churches, that we may soon attain the common table fellowship that Christ so clearly desires. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the Church, the body of the risen Christ, may work unceasingly to promote the common good. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. For your own prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, we bring before you the prayers we make, spoken and unspoken. We ask you to receive them and answer them according to your will, and we make all these prayers in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. This is the God of 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of glory, and in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Your indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope. Buti, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world, how blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with the Spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.